This conference will now be recorded. Okay, okay everyone. Um, if you're calling in, um, and you're not a counselor, could you please put your phone on mute at this time? Um, I'm going to do a quick roll call here. Uh, counselors, you can put your phones off mute. Uh, Councillor Fackrell? Councillor Fackrell? Councillor Jesse? I am here. Councillor Cockrum? I'm here. Councillor Fackrell? Can you guys hear me? We can now, Rita. Well, I, I'm i really having trouble with this, so I'm going to get offline and I'm going to phone in because I'm having trouble. So I'm here, but I'll, I'm leaving. I'll be back in a minute. OK, we'll wait. <laughs> you don't have to wait for me. It might take a while. Hold on. Gary Smith. <clears throat> You carry your phones on mute. Oh, I'm now talking to you. Awesome. Thanks, Carrie. Mr. Mayor. Hey, Councillor Smith. When uh, you call the meeting to order, would you uh, allow me to say something to start off? Yes, I will. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> okay, folks, we're going to get started here in just a minute. Um, if you've called in as a uh, visitor, please put your phone on mute at this time so we don't get any uh, echoes or static. And uh, we're just waiting for uh, Councillor Fackerel, and then we're going to get started here in just a second. Any sign of Councillor Fackrell, Chad? Checking. Nope, not yet. Yep. Okay, hey everyone, we'll wait a few minutes here for Councillor Fackrell, and then we'll get uh, get going here in just a sec. If you if you did call in, uh, please put your phone on mute at this time. Chad, you're on mute. No, I got to do that at least every meeting. Uh, <laughs> I have a caller number three that's on. Uh, who might that be? I've got everybody else identified. 
Rita, you don't happen to be there yet, do you? Caller number three, could you identify yourself? Any chance I'm number three, Chad? This is Dan. No, I've got you labeled now, Mr. Jesse. Okay. So I'm going to try to give uh, Rita a call. Uh, and see if I can help her out. I'll be right back. Oh, caller number five might be Rita. I'm back. All right. Hey, Rita. Thanks for coming back. I'm sorry. That it was crazy. It was it was a nightmare. I can hear you really good now. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, are you all ready to get started? I'm Great. ready. By the way, it's really hard to hear and understand Chad, wherever he is. Okay. We'll do, we'll do the best we can. I'll speak up. Okay, the July 7th, 2020 Special City Council meeting is now in session. Uh, anyone that has uh, call, called in to, to listen, uh, please put your phones on mute at this time. Uh, the purpose of this special meeting is to uh, go over resolution 949, extending workers comp, and then also uh, later on in new business to discuss consideration to initiate uh, an ORS 33.710 judicial val validation proceeding. And this is in reference to um, possibly building a new fire station on a, on a location. And uh, as we are doing our due diligence, we want to um, make sure all our T's are crossed and I's are dotted um, and that there aren't anything, uh, there isn't anything zoning wise or, or anything that could interfere with that. Um, so this process is uh, to discuss that. Um, at this time, uh, Councillor Carrie Smith has requested uh, to make a statement slash announcement. Uh, Councillor Smith, would you like to go ahead? I would, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, Council, Mr. Mayor, at this time, I feel it's uh, it behooves me and saddens me at the same time, I must resign my position with CERT. I um, feel it's, I haven't been able to attend any meetings because of conflict with my schedule and because of uh, the fact that we have two other members of the council on board. So at this time I am resigning my position on CERT. That's it. Okay, Councilor Smith, thank you uh, so much for that. And uh, next up, uh, we have a declaration of any conflict of interest at this time. Would anyone, uh, does anyone need to make a declaration? Yes, this is Dan Jesse. I have a conflict of interest in discussing the uh, resolution to extend workers comp to volunteers as I am a CERT volunteer. And so I will not be participating in this part of the discussion or voting. Uh, this is Paul Lina. Uh, I'm going to declare a conflict of interest on Resolution 949 uh, uh, because of uh, being a member of the STIR group. Okay. Um, I don't have any declarations at this time. Does anyone else? I don't. I don't. Okay, thank you. Um, next up, we have a visitor section, a uh, three minute visitor section. And uh, we didn't have anyone sign up ahead of time, but we do have some callers that have called in. And at this time, I'll ask if uh, any caller would like to speak or give feedback for three minutes. And we just ask that you give your name and address for the record. Would anyone like to speak at this time? Okay. 
thank you all for uh, listening in on the meeting. Uh, next up, we have ordinances and resolutions, and we have resolution 949, extending workers' comp, and we'll go ahead and uh, give that to Chad. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this resolution is to extend workers' comp to various groups within Gearheart. Uh, I would like to suggest that we make one change to the volunteer resolution 949, uh, item number six, under community service volunteers slash inmates. I'd like to move that X from not applicable to applicable. That way we have certain groups covered for pop-up volunteer efforts. Uh, not that we plan on using inmates at this time. Uh, so with that change, uh, I would like to then also ask Peter to kind of take it moving forward uh, to see if he had anything to add to a way to make this happen. Yeah, so we we had, I had kind of a protracted discussion with the OGC culminating in a letter um, a uh, letter of guidance that arrived this morning regarding uh, workers' compensation. And, you know, one of the, one of the, in the past, we've been told by the OGC that the city council can uh, vote to cover all city volunteers with workers' comp insurance, which is what our insurer requests, but that the city council cannot vote to cover um itself with workers' comp insurance, even though all other volunteers are covered because that would be an impermissible conflict of interest. One of the things about that that has concerned me is that I view workers' comp insurance as something that benefits the city and that if a volunteer working on a city project is injured, unless um, it, it fits within some very narrow uh, carve-outs, then that person will get workers' comp insurance, but otherwise cannot sue the city or seek damages as a result of their injuries. The injuries are all covered by workers' comp. If people are volunteers of the city and are not covered by workers' comp insurance, then what that means is that no, those, none of those prohibitions apply, and so they are able to sue the city. Um, and the city can be responsible for their costs, which could be far in excess of, of what they would be entitled to under workmen's uh, workers' compensation insurance, depending on the injury. So my view is that the workers' comp is really a benefit to the city, not the individual. But that is not how the OGC sees it. So they they're one of they're one of three options, um, two that are within our somewhat within our control one that is outside of our control. Uh, the first would be that the city councilors who are up for re-election this cycle could vote to um, uh, that the city will provide workers' comp insurance going forward for future city councils. Um, it, they would, the two city councilors that are not up for re-election would be declare an actual conflict of interest and recuse themselves. The other three would declare a potential conflict of interest and could vote. Um, the, the concern I have with that is that, you know, Oregon law is pretty clear that a current city council can't bind a future city council. And so if we have a city council saying that the city shall provide um, workers' compensation benefits for future city councils in perpetuity, we're still going to have to have that next city council basically ratify the insurance contract, which is what you guys will be doing tonight. So I, I don't know how effective that would be. Um, the, other, the other option that the OGC gave us is going out to voters with the question of should the city of Gearhart cover all volunteers with workers' comp insurance, including the city council? If the uh, voters authorize that, then going forward, the, the city council would be covered and it wouldn't, we wouldn't have the conflict situation. Um, again, that would, you know, I, that, that's something that could be done in, in November or in a future election if, if the city council is so uh, inclined. 
The third would be um, a carve out from the state uh, state laws, um, such as like for instance, right now, if if someone were to give you city councilors, you know, a a ticket to play pickleball worth five dollars, that would be allowed because it's under that fifty dollar uh, mark. Uh, similarly, the legislature could change the law to specifically say that workers' comp insurance is uh, not covered, is not a benefit um, that is covered by these rules. That would take, you know, the work of Senator Johnson um, as well as whoever the um, state representative is uh, next uh, in the 2021 session. Um, and so that's that's not that will be outside of our control. But you know, my job as a city attorney is to always advise you on on legal risk. And any time that um, city uh, volunteers, whether they're volunteer firefighters or volunteers building the trail or what have you, any any time that they're not covered by workers' comp insurance, um, if there were to be an injury, that would be you know that there's some significant downside liability because they are able to sue us. Um, because our insurer has requested that we provide workers' comp insurance to all volunteers, you know, the fact that we're not, um, and, you know, we can't right now, but uh, without violating ethical rules, but the fact that we're not could complicate coverage. So that's the conversation that uh, Chad and I are probably going to need to have with our insurer in the future. So that's kind of where we are today. And again, we got the guidance that we got today it was not the guidance that I was hoping that we were going to get because it doesn't solve the overall problem that we have, uh, which is liability to the city. But um, when the OGC provides us with guidance, you know, if, if you as a council were not to follow that, that would put yourselves as individuals uh, in potential liability ethics uh, with a potential ethics violation with the OGC, which is something that no one would ever want to do. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Why can we not just carve out the counselors from the coverage? Well, that would be one other option is that we could say that members of the city council are not covered by, um, are not covered by the insurance. Maybe you could even say in their role as a city councilor, since some of us have dual roles, we can still recuse ourselves, but at least the remaining councilors could get a vote. Right. So the way that it works is that the two people that have identified having conflicts of interest due to their current membership in CERT. Um, would recuse themselves, and then the, the city council would exclude the city council from coverage. Um, but theoretically, any CERT members, if they're performing their duties as CERT members, would be covered. If you guys are performing your duties as members of the city council, you would not be covered. Um, yeah, exactly. It sounds like that's the only alternative, and uh, I'm okay with that. That's so exactly right now we have we have a quorum of city councilors that are not current members of CERT. So the two that are members of CERT would recuse themselves, and then the other three would have a quorum for the purposes of voting. So if there were at least two yes votes, then everyone but the city council would be covered. Okay. If that's uh, how we if that's how we modify nine four nine by okay. carving out the city council. Okay. Um, so before that, um, do Councillor uh, Jesse and Councillor Cockrum have to officially recuse themselves at this time? Yeah. Well, they've they've already they've already done so at the beginning of the meeting. But if we were actually in a meeting instead of a Zoom slash conference call meeting, I would ask that they, you know, step away from the dais and 
sit in the audience until after the um, the vote happens um, because because uh, we're meeting remotely. You know that th them just saying that they recuse themselves from the vote is the functional equivalent of that action. Okay, perfect. We can so, we can mute our phone. No, that's okay. Um, so I just uh, we just need to hear from Councillor Cockrum and Councillor Jesse, uh, just stating that you're going to recuse yourself from uh, further discussion and a vote. This is Councillor Jesse, and I am recusing re recusing myself from discussion and vote in regards to workers' comp for for volunteers. Okay, thank you, Councillor Jesse. Councillor Cockrum. Yeah, this is Councillor Cockrum. I'm going to recuse myself from the discussion and the vote on workers' compensation resolution 949. Okay, thank thank you, Councillor Cockrum. Um, the three, the two councillors and myself that um, have not recused ourselves would uh, one of you like to make a motion uh, to pass resolution 949? with I will with uh alterations uh, okay um shall I yes please I'm I move that we extend workman's compensation coverage to volunteers of the city of Gearhart pursuant to ORS 656.031 workman's compensation coverage and it'll be provided to the classes of volunteers listed in this resolution, noted on CIS payroll schedule and verified at audit, except for the city council members. I'll second that motion. Okay. Motion seconded. Any discussion amongst us three? No. Chad, Chad has a point. Chad? Yes, uh, Councillor Smith, I was wondering if you would mind um, updating or changing your resolution or your uh, uh, to add line six community service okay. volunteers and inmates from non applicable right. to applicable. Okay, and to amend my motion, I would like to refer to line six community service volunteers and inmates where it is marked non-applicable and move the X out of there and have it as applicable. Okay. Second that. Okay, so Councillor Smith amended his um, motion and uh, Councillor Fackerel seconded. Any further discussion? No. Nope. Okay. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any Anyone opposed? Okay, so moved. Thank you. Okay. Moving right along under new business. Um, we have consideration to initiate an ORS uh, 33.710 judicial validation proceeding, and I'll um, I'll let Peter uh, comment on that. Well, this is something we mentioned at the last city council meeting, and there, as as all of you are aware, and as the people that are listening aware are aware, I think um, the city council uh, has gone through some due diligence or a lot of due diligence regarding a potential site for a potential future fire station. Uh, it's known as the High Point site. And through that, um, that, that site is not currently inside the city of Gearhart, is directly adjacent. The properties uh, may or may not be covered by um, certain CCNRs for the Palisades Homeowners Association. We've received some correspondence that, that they are um, because that Homeowners Association is in existence, et cetera. And then we've received some correspondence that says that the 
HOA is defunct. Um, Chad and I have looked through a lot of the documents that were are on the original plat and that, um, that cover the um, homeowners association. Uh, John Crawford, who's the president of the homeowners association, who is on this call, um, has has raised some points with us, such as sight line. You know that there might be a sight line prohibition. Um, on constructing the, the firehouse on certain portions of the property, et cetera. And I've, I've looked at those, um, Chad looked at them. Uh, we, I, I would interpret that to say as a sight line to the extent that it exists, exists on the prior street or the Western street, not on the street where that parcel would be. That's how I would, how I read the documents and, I don't see anything in there that would prohibit it. Um, but I think that what we're trying to do in our due diligence to the extent possible is to get certainty as to whether this is a site where the fire station can be uh, constructed. Fortunately, there is a proceeding under Oregon law called a validation proceeding. It's found in ORS 33.710 and ORS 33.720. It's what's called a proceeding in REM, which means it's a proceeding about something. In this case, if something is a firehouse and whether it can be built in that location. And the benefit of the validation proceeding is that a judge will look at the issue. If there are people that believe that, um, that there are reasons that it, the firehouse cannot be built in that location, whether it's CCNRs, the Homeowners Association, or, or other reasons, they're able to participate in that proceeding. Um, it's in circuit court. It's uh, done on an expedited basis. And the benefit is that once that is over, the, the judge rules either yes, um, that there that can be built there because there's, there's nothing that would prevent it from being built, or no, that it can't be built there because of language in the CCNRs or something else. That um, that ruling is binding on all parties, whether or not they participated in the validation proceeding. So the, the benefit is that if the judge validates our ability to um, build a potential firehouse on that location, then someone that moves, you know, maybe to a neighboring home or um, hasn't heard anything about it eight months down the road and uh, realizes it's happening and decides to uh, file a lawsuit or, or take other uh, actions saying it can't be built, um, this, this, that person will be prohibited from uh, bringing that action because of the validation proceeding. So the, the question of whether or not it could be built in that location would be um, would be decided uh, once and for all. And so that's, uh, that is one of the reasons to do a validation proceeding is because um, it kind of brings out all these issues into the open so that uh, we can be aware of them and deal with them and, and make sure that we're acting within our legal rights. Um, and the, the other reason would be, you know, it, it, prevent future problems down the road because once and for all, I think everyone will have the, the answer. If the answer is yes, then, um, then obviously it takes uh, the voters of the city in order to authorize the bonds. Um, if the answer is no, that, that there are, is something that, that, that we can't build it there because there's something that would prevent it from being built, then at that point we can explain to members of the community that despite the elevation of the site and despite the fact that from a public safety perspective, it may make the most sense, that's not a site that we'll be able to consider in the future. So uh, it will, I think, result in everyone being informed of, um, of what can or can't happen and, and hopefully um, allow us to communicate that to people effectively. Well, thanks, Peter. I think 100% clarity is always uh, obviously in the best interest of the community. And um, even though, you know, you guys have 
obviously looked at this thoroughly throughout the process, um, getting valid validation uh, from, from a judge seems to make the most sense um, moving forward. So uh, what, would the, what would the next step be then entail? Do we need to um, have a discussion or resolution or uh, what, what's the next step? Um, you as the governing body would, if you're so inclined, uh, would um, instruct us to file the uh, necessary notices so that um, so that you as the governing body would have uh, commenced the proceeding in the circuit court of Clatsop County. So um, we would be preparing those documents and we would be publishing them in the newspaper and they would that would be informing the general public that you as a council have commenced this proceeding and giving them notice of, of how they can participate in that action if they want to. So okay. a simple instruction to us would be sufficient. So basically just a consensus from us to give you that instruction. Correct. Good. Okay. I ask a question. Of course, Councillor Smith. Uh, Peter, does this take Luba out of the loop? If the if the Luba appeal was based on the city council's ability to cite it at that location, yes. Um, there may be some maybe some technical um, other Luba argument that could be made, uh, not not regarding the zoning or anything of that nature. Um, this really prevents a lot of um, this, uh, the, the argument, our argument of course would be that it would forestall um, future litigation regarding this project. Um, it would be up to uh, a judge in order to, to make that determination. But yeah, that the, this, this specific statute was drafted because oftentimes when cities were going out for bonding, someone might say that the city council didn't have the authority to go out for the bonding. And, and that, of course, would raise the interest rates on the bonding because there would be that uncertainty. And so the, the history of this, the validations proceedings were to provide basically final uh, conclusion. Um, and as it says in ORS 33720 um, sub six, uh, claim preclusion and issue preclusion apply to all matters adjudicated in the proceeding. Um, and so, you know, the, the argument would be that once the judge had concluded that we could do that, um, any future claims would be precluded. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions or uh, do we have a consensus to uh, have Peter move forward? I agree to move forward. I have a question. This is Rita. Yes. What are the right. costs associated with this? It's a lot less than other litigation as a general rule. And I, I, the reason I say as a general rule is because this could be appealed to the Court of Appeals. Um, you know, so although it's intended to be an expedited proceeding, it, any, any proceeding can become protracted. But unlike a normal trial where there are witnesses and experts and things of that nature, this isn't one of those. This is basically oral argument to the extent that someone comes and says they can't build it and here's the reason why. Um, there would be pleadings that would be drafted and there would be oral arguments by the um, attorneys. But uh, it is far less intensive than what you would normally consider a lawsuit. Thank you. Is there a turnaround time on that? Approximately? Yeah. yeah, so it requires notice three weeks in a row in the newspaper general circulation in the county. It um, Then there are 10 days after that third notice where someone could bring a claim. If nobody brings a claim, then we would ask that the judge validate it and, and it would be um, essentially over. Um, 
And if someone appeared and said that we couldn't do it and here's the reasons why, then it would, the statute says it's to be expedited, but it would depend on the availability of the judge and their staff time and, and how much briefing they needed. I have been involved in a validation proceeding before, and um, it, I, I want to say was King, the, the circuit court portion of it was concluded um, in a matter of weeks, uh, is my recollection. It was appealed to the Court of Appeals, um, but then it settled prior to oral argument. So that one dragged on for a period of months because it had been appealed to the Court of Appeals, but um, absent that, then it, it's usually pretty quick. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions or do we have consensus? Well, I concur with uh, Terry, what Terry said. Okay. I agree. I, I'm, happy, I'm happy to have you proceed. Okay, and I am as well. So you got everybody on board. Okay. Any other comments, Peter? No, I think that I think my sense is that people are really eager to have resolution one way or the other. And so hopefully this will really help uh, going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for everyone involved. Um, Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate that uh, very much. Do you have anything to add, Chad, on that one, or are you good? I'm good, Matt, thank you. Okay. Um, at this time, do we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I move we adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, meeting adjourned. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Good night.